Alrighty gang, got a request to talk about attacking strategies. So, we'll start basic, and we'll go simple to complex here, um, with strategies. Now, simple strategies is, have everything ready to go before you even attack. So what does this entail? Well, this entails having a good troop formation set up and ready to go. Make sure that with your troop formation, you have all of your troops maxed out. So you want to make sure that you can't take any more troops than you currently are planning on taking. So I'm just going to increase that, and I'll save that. Now my troop formation is ready to go. I am almost ready to go. But wait, there's more. Now with our troop formation, one thing that we want to analyze here is going to be my estate buffs. So, estate buffs. This is how I get ready for my tr uh, to attack turn on the anti-scout. I don't want anyone looking at me. I don't want anyone to know how many troops I have home, how many resources I have. I don't want people to know how big of a target I am. Attack, defense, march capacity. Always utilize your strongest ability. Now, if you don't have a lot of gold, that's one thing. However, always go as high as possible. 25%. You know, don't sell yourself short, okay? March capacity. I don't use this 50% March capacity, except for that one time I did for all, you all. But 25% will do. Now, with this being said, temporary wonders. If you have the gold, get a temporary wonder. People ask me, why don't you get the Hellfire Cannon for one day? Why do you keep buying the Hellfire Cannon, or uh, the Air Cannon for eight hours? So, if you take a look, the stat uh, bonuses are the same. However, there's a little bit of writing here. Special property. When the wonder is equipped, your estate will benefit from your airship's defensive abilities, even when your airship is not present. What this means, if you send your airship out which, with your main march, you will have all the abilities of your airship. So, if we look at your airship abilities, I will still have all of these abilities if I get attacked while my airship and my main march are not home. Now, two things to consider with before purchasing a air cannon bef uh, over a hellfire cannon, hand cannon. Um, so, how many troops do you have? Do you have a lot of troops? If you have a lot of troops, you're buying the air cannon for eight hours, not the one day. If you have one march of troops, only buy the Hellfire Hand Cannon. Because you're going to save yourself some money, you get some extra use out of it, and if you ha send out one march, you're not going to have enough troops to defend your castle anyway, so there's no point in having that extra ability. And if you are really trying to go ham, we'll talk about mercenary airships here in a second. Stay tuned. Um, but, right now, just really basic. That is a temporary wonder that I always utilize. Now, there are more temporary wonders, but I'll get into that here in a second. So, we're buffed up. We have our troop formation set. Now, we need to analyze our target. So, know your players. Know your enemy. Who are you planning on attacking? Okay? So, let's say I want to attack Darth Rage. Okay? Well, I want to go ahead and I want to know everything about my opponent. Now, the less time you need to spend doing this prior to sending a march, the better off you will be. So here's my estate, here's Darth Rage's estate. Granted, we won't be right next to each other, or in the same alliance. However, I'm just using Darth Rage, my friend, as an example. So, just by looking at his profile, I can get a little bit of information. 214 million power. He has a lot of kills. He seems to be winning a lot of his battles, most of them. Um, he has a ton of kills, not a whole lot of losses. This guy is strong. Um, but this really tells me nothing. I need to know what kind of stats he has. So I'm going to be asking my friends, like, hey, anyone have a scout report on Darth Rage? Take a look at his stats. Compare that to some stats that you can find from yourself when you are buffed. You want to make sure you have a good number on him. Now, think about this. How much power does he have? If he has high stats, a lot of his power is going to be coming from his equipment, and his castle. Like, take a look at my castle, for example. 20 mil 205 million power in troops. 42 million power in my buildings. 10 million power in my research. Um, and 15 million in my equipment. 
So I have a lot of power in that is not worth the not related to troops. So I have about 50, 65, let's let's call it 67 million power that is not related to any troops. If I have 67 million power, I only have 200 and 12 million power that is related to my troops. So, if we take a look back at Darth Ridge's power, I'm assuming that he also has about 70 to 75 million power in his equipment. So, if you do a little quick math, you'll realize he has about 130 million power. What what this all really boils down to um, is that, well, 135 million power, and if we figure out how much you know, power per troop. He has a lot of troops. Um, I don't really care, Darth Rage. I'm not looking at your power again. But if he has T10s, that's about a hundred. That hundred power per troop. He's probably got a million troops. So a million troops. Can you really take that on head on if you're about equal stats? No, you can't. You're gonna be walking your troops into death. So it's kind of this kind of analysis. This guy's got Demon Hunter plus 5, but he has better stats than me. So it's not going to be a good attack um, if I'm taking him on at home. But if I take him on head-on, the chances of me surviving are going to be a lot better. Um, it's not going to be great, especially since he has better stats than me, but my chances are better nonetheless. So what are my options? Well, if I'm in an alliance, yes, I can Mega Rally him. I can utilize the strongest player in my line, so I would utilize KVK Pyro. He's got the best stats in the kingdom, and he also has a level 40, but we're only talking about stats here. So I would have him start. I can get 1 million troops in his march, and we're going to be a million on a million, and we're going to have a good, really good chance of winning that battle. So this is something I want to consider, and this is all prior to sending a scout. The second you send a scout, the second they realize this person is trying to attack me. So let's go ahead, find a dead castle, and send a scout out. So I'm going to send a scout out on this guy. The second my scout goes, he gets a notification. He knows something is coming, especially if this is a kill event. So this is something I want to keep in mind and be aware of. When I look at my scout report, there's a couple different things that I want to take a look at. I want to take a look at troops. And I also want to take a look at reinforcement troops. This is something easily, you know, people miss this quite a lot. And it can cost you a lot because when you have reinforcement troops, that could be an extra half a million troops in their castle waiting to attack you. Now, I also want to take a look at traps. Does this person have traps? Should I send my uh, artillery in to combat these traps? This is all stuff that I would uh, want to look at. If the person has about 20,000 traps or more, I always send artillery. But that's for me. I'm a castle level 35 sending T11s. I don't know what they have. I don't, you know, I don't know what you have. I don't I can't answer that exactly. But for me, if they have 20,000 traps, I'm going to be sending artillery. Now for you if you're maybe only a castle level 26 or above to like castle level 30, you might want to send traps if uh, artillery if they have 10,000 traps. Take a look at the research. Very good idea right off the bat. If they have like 100% research, they're going to be very strong. We can take a look at a benefit comparison as well. See as much information as possible. And now you can only do this if they do not have anti-scout on. Uh, so this is all something to keep in mind. Now, let's get a little more complex now. If we're going to be going heavy on the attacking, something we want to take a look at is a mercenary airship. These are expensive. These are not free. $20 to go ahead and buy a air mercenary airship. So if I have a lot of troops, I have 3 million troops, I can send multiple primary marches. Um, so I want to go ahead and have a mercenary airship with my marches because I'm gaining a lot of benefits. I'll uh, usually see a 200% drop in my stats from utilizing my airship to not utilizing my airship. 200% stats is a huge deal. Sometimes that's all people have for their stats. So when I'm dropping 200% stats, I am increasing my chance of losing that battle tenfold. Always march with your mercenary airship against high 
um, strength players. So this is something you want to keep in mind. So another thing that we want to take a look at besides our mercenary airship is going to be another temporary wonder. Now with this temporary wonder, what this is, is the commander's horn. It increases march capacity by 15%. So this is something we want to start off with before we send our march. After we send the march, we want to go ahead and swap to our Hellfire hand cannon or, or our air cannon and this will give us not only our 15% march increase but it will also give us the 15% troop health, troop attack, troop defense stats. So this is something to keep in mind. Now after we send our march, depending on the who our target is and our idea of how strong their uh, allies are, we might want to speed up that march. So it might be a good idea to speed up the march so that there's no possibility of them getting reinforced or shielding so you can get your march off. There's a lot, there's so much to this. I can make, I can make a lot of different videos about this, but I'm just trying to, you know, give you the most important information that I look at personally before I send a march. Um, and Regina brought up a great point. If you're attacking someone like Darth Rage, who has a lot of troops at home, a million troops, and I'm trying to send them, you know, a march head on, always send a lot of, um, infantry. So I normally send about 50,000 infantry. Well, if I'm attacking Darth head on and I know he has a lot of troops, I need my march to survive through um, just my infantry. So I might increase my infantry to 75,000, maybe even 100,000 uh, infantry to keep the rest of my troops, my cavalry, and my distance troops alive. Because remember, infantry start stands at the front of your march. Cavalry in the middle, distance in the back your infantry will die first. Keep them alive, keep them healthy, and that will allow you to do more damage with your cavalry and your distance troops. Um, now, if they have traps, your troops will just walk into them and die unless you have artillery. Never substitute infantry for artillery because in the end of the day, infantry cannot do anything to their artillery. So keep this in mind. Um, another thing that we want to look at with attacking is just some different strategies within that but that's going to be very complex I'm going to save that for another video we're at 12 minutes already in this video but if you are interested let me know leave a comment in this video um, and I can go ahead and talk about that if you all are interested but that's all I've got for now this is Captain Cowboy thank you for watching this video don't forget to subscribe and stay alert with all the latest videos Thank you all for watching.